What's up, party people? DeLuca here. I decided to put together a new pedal board for myself. As you can see over here, this is my old pedal board that I've been using on shows. And it's not a lot in it, but uh, I want to have something a little bit bigger. So what I'm going to do is transfer most of these pedals over to the new... I bought a pedal train too. And I just got it the other day and I went ahead and started putting it together and what's good about this it has the little rails underneath where you can hide cables underneath like this and then you can mount a separate a power supply it doesn't come with a power supply but uh, it it usually works well with the Voodoo Lab uh, pedal power 2 plus okay and I went ahead and bought the 2 plus the Voodoo Lab and the pedal train comes with a couple brackets to mount it and so once you get it mounted you have to of course you have to drill your own holes so my handy dandy portable drill drilled out four holes it comes with some uh, self-tapping screws you go ahead and mount it in there and uh, you get it all sturdy and uh, secure and then if you look on the back of the pedal uh, the voodoo laps you can see it has what three six eight uh, outlets for pedals so you can have at least from this thing you can have up to eight pedals running okay the voodoo lab also comes with the uh, with these uh, adapters for the pedals okay you have different ones here okay and then one side of course plugs into the Voodoo lap, other side goes to your pedal, whichever direction you want to run it, okay? And of course, like I said, you run it underneath, and then you come up underneath, you come up on the other side, plug into your pedal, okay? So that's pretty much how that works. Also, what's cool about the pedal, uh, the Voodoo Labs, it comes with the uh, 120 volt power cable, these two holes in the front of the pedal train, plug it in like that plug it into the wall or power strip okay what's good about the uh, voodoo labs supposed to be very good isolation as far as noise reduction and one of the problems I had with my pedal board over there it's noisy I'd go to places and it'd be really noisy I just did a casino gig a couple weeks ago and I couldn't even use this pedal board because it was so noisy and the way I have it now, this is hooked up with a one spot uh, power adapter. Works good in most places, but uh, when I uh, took it to this one casino, yeah, one spot, that's what I was using. And it works good 90% of the time, but that 10% of the time when you're in a place, like I was a couple weeks ago, it was unusable. I could not use this pedal board. It was just too noisy. So. I'm going to try out this uh, Voodoo Lab, see how this goes. What you do is you lay down you know, your Velcro strips. Your pedals are going to attach with, with Velcro. Okay, you, They're going to lay on there like this. You put the strips down on each rail like that, one side of the Velcro. Other side you're going to put across the pedal. Okay, And then you're just going to plop it down there in whatever order you want to do it. This is the other side, so this is the side you're going to peel off, stick to your pedal, then pop it down on the pedal board. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm going to take all the pedals off that pedal board, like I said. Also bought me a new little toy, this bass whammy, and I also bought a new toy too. Haven't even taken it out of the box yet. Haven't even taken it out of the box, still taped up. Man. My new MXR bass octave. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I'm going to try this out. I've been reading about this one and hearing about the good reviews on it. Watched a few videos of people playing it. So it's going to be part of the DeLuca arsenal now. Okay. So I'm going to hook this suck up too to go with my other MXRs. I'll probably put it 
next to the envelope filter like that. So the way my pedal board works now, guitar cable goes into the tuner, out of the tuner into the compressor, out of compressor into the envelope filter, out of envelope filter into this bass synthesizer, okay, out of the synthesizer into the big muff, out of the big muff into the sans amp, out of the sans amp into the amplifier, also into the uh, front of house mixing board, okay, so it's kind of subjective how you want to, what order you want to put your pedals in, this is the order I use that works for me. And probably what I'll do is I'll put the bass octave out of the envelope filter. I'll go to the octave, out of the octave, into the synthesizer, out of the synthesizer, into the big muff, out of big muff, into sans amp. Now what I got to do though is incorporate this whammy pedal. Try to figure out where I'm going to put this whammy pedal. So I'm probably going to put the whammy pedal either before the tuner or directly after the tuner before the compressor so it's either going to go in front of the tuner or after the tuner of course I'll try it out if it doesn't work then I'll move it around try it in a different spot there's also a couple other pedals that I'm going to try to get into this uh, board too also too I didn't say what this was this is a wireless unit okay so if I want to go wireless I have it set up to where uh, you run a cable from here around to the tuner like that you plug it into there like that okay and then you put your your wireless unit on your on your uh, guitar goes into here out to the tuner runs through the chain like like I just demonstrated so I'm gonna put this uh, wireless unit on here too Okay, I don't use it a lot, but every once in a while I'd, I'll hook it up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut away. I'm going to clean these pedals up a little bit. Get the Velcro on them. Start putting them in order, and I'll be right back to show you what I got. Alright, so what we got here, they got the base whammy pedal. And I want to put the Velcro on it. Okay. So what you got to do. These pedals come with little rubber feet. You got to take that rubber off of there. Because you got to put the Velcro strips across there. So this new octave pedal I got. The whammy pedal I got. I got to take this, uh, these rubber feet off. Okay. So get some scissors. Or whatever you need to do. Pop that off of there that okay so you don't need to put velcro all across all you need to do is put it across the contact area that you're going to be using so I think I'm gonna mount this pedal like right here what you want to do with your pedals the ones that you use the most that you stomp on the most you want them in the front row right here because it's easier for you to hit them okay with your feet the ones you don't use as much you can put along the top because you don't access them as much you might use them once or twice a night and you just put them in a in a, uh, a layout that you can easily stomp them but you don't need them a lot the ones that you hit a lot you're going to be put on along this row down here you want to put the guitar cable coming in this way at least this is the way I do it. I come in from the right side, exit out through the left side to the amplifier and to the uh, front of house mixer. Okay, some people go this way and go that way. Some people come from the top and come out the bottom. Whatever works for you. Okay, it's no, it's no, uh, no uh, set way to do it. It's whatever works for you. Okay, for me, it's right to left. Okay. So, got this. Now I'm going to put a strip. Let's Velcro across. And the way you want to do the Velcro, peel it and lay it down as you need it. Take it out, 
peel it as you need it. Don't so that way you don't waste any. Cause you always need this stuff. Cause you might add petals later. Okay, so you stay it like that. Keep it like that. And you cut your piece. Like that. Okay. So it's gonna sit like pretty much like that. Then I'll put another strip along the bottom. Get some extra holding. Okay. Like so, man, like so. Make sure you line it up good. Like that. Make sure it's on there. Okay, cut it. Make sure it's down. Turn it over. Bam. There it is. It's on. Okay. So that's the first pedal. Now, what I decided to do, see, because of my tuner, I mean not tuner, wireless unit, I don't use it that much. So that's the candidate for the top row. Wipe it off because, you know, I don't wipe off my stuff that much. See, I already had Velcro on it for this other pedal board. And where these strips are located is not going to work for this one. That's going to, these strips, let me see. This might work and it might not. Nah, see, it's not going to work. Because I have it laid out in the middle, I need, I'm going to need it on the edges. Okay. So what I got to do is get rid of these. And these can be hard to get off sometimes, which is a good thing. You don't want it coming off on you. So, come on, sucker. Okay, so you peel it off. Then you're going to put the other strip on there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put, like I said, this one's not accessed a lot. Like I said, I don't go wireless all the time. So I'm going to put this one on the top row, on top of this whammy pedal, right above it. That way, too, it's in a good spot to where, when, if I do need to use it. I can go ahead and plug it in really quick. So let's see here. Put a little strip on it. That. Okay. Then I'll put a little bit down on the bottom too. It's a little overkill for this pedal. If I had a thinner strip of Velcro, I would use that, but I don't have it. So it's a little bit overkill for this pedal. A little too much Velcro. Whatever, man, whatever. Pop it down just like that. So. It's in that order, so if I ever need the wireless, I'll just take my little cable, loop it around, BAM! I got wireless, okay? When I'm not using it, I just leave the cable unplugged and just have power running into it so when it's ready whenever I need it, then that's all I need to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the rest of my pedals out the pedal board over there. 
I'm going to pull the uh, rubber stoppers off of this thing, the bumpers, and then put my Velcro across. Then I'm going to lay this out in order, and I'll be back. I'll show you what I did before I wire it up. All right, later. All right, peoples, I'm back. Got the pedals laid out in a temporary experimental order that I'm thinking about going with. Of course, this is not set in stone. I could rearrange uh, pedals once I hook everything up and if it doesn't sound right or I don't like the way it looks as far as being able to uh, access a certain pedal. But like I said before, what you want is you want your less used pedals along the top because you know you got to reach a little farther to step on it right so the ones that you access the most you want in the front okay these are the ones that you that you tap or activate the most okay so uh, one thing I didn't tell you before I laid the pedals down was when, when I laid the velcro strips down I used the rough side on the pedal train okay and then I stick the fuzzy side of the velcro on the back of the pedal so then it go ahead and you can put it down on the pedal train okay so the rough side of the velcro on the pedal train stuck to that the fuzzy side of the velcro stuck to the pedal okay so let me show you the order that I'm thinking about going in okay so like I said before I don't use the wireless much so I put that in the top right corner okay not going to use it a lot okay so put the whammy right here the whammy is going to be the first pedal okay so i'm going to plug my guitar right into the whammy okay out of the whammy it's going to go into the tuner so it's just a little patch cable a little small let me see if i got a little small one so something like this little small patch cable that's gonna go like that okay and see I put you can see I put gaps between the pedals this is so I can fit you know the patch cable in there I might have to adjust this because I can already tell that I'm gonna have to move this tuner pedal to the left a little bit just so I can get this this patch cable in there okay as far as which cables to use for patch cables that's up to you a lot of people prefer different kinds, fancier kinds. I just use what works, okay? So, out of the tuner, I'm going to go use a longer patch cable, go up to the compressor. I don't use a compressor a lot because uh, my amplifier has built-in compression that I use a lot, okay? This is more specialized for either slap tone or some other tone I'm trying to get. So, I don't access this a lot, but... Um, so it's up on the top row. So out of here, into here. Now comes out of the compressor, but then it's going to come back down. Then it's going to hit this envelope filter, which I do use a lot. Okay. Out of the envelope filter, I'm going to go into the octave pedal, which I, I use a lot too. Okay. Out of the octave pedal, I'm going to go back up to one of the less used pedals, this synthesizer pedal. Out of this synthesizer pedal, I'm going to go into this bass wah. Okay. Out of the bass wah, I'm going to go into the, the big muff. Okay. The big muff is going to sit here. Out of the big muff, I'm going to go down into the sans amp. Out of the sans amp, it comes out. Okay. Sans amp output goes to the amplifier. XLR will go to the front of house on the mixing board if you're doing a bigger gig. Okay. The reason I use the Sans Amp last for a couple reasons. Um, if I get any signal loss in here, where you know, because there's so many cables going to be running through here, you might get some signal loss. Okay, it might sound a little thinner. This will beef it right back up. Okay. Also, too, when it goes to a front of house, I want to get all my pedals in here into the front of the house I want everything going to the front of the house if I put this in the front and then run through the pedals 
and the front of the house guy plugs into his, I won't get it. I won't get any of these pedals going through the front of the house. So this ensures, being last in the chain, that one, I'm going to get a good strong signal. If I need to boost the signal, I just act, I just uh, turn this on. Bam, signal comes right back strong. Second, I get all my effect pedals coming through the front of the house. Okay, and through my amplifier too. Okay, all right. Uh, let's see what else. And plus, I can scope the tone. I can have a slap tone. I can have whatever tone I want. Also, too, if I get a ground hum, I can do a uh, ground lift here. Okay, same thing too. So it's the last thing in the chain, and I like it. Works good for me like that. Okay, so I'm gonna mount this pedal in here. So what you wanna do? You put it in there, line it up wiggle it a little bit so it seats the velcro seats okay and then it's in there now i do that with all of them too wiggle it a little bit now i'm gonna have to make some adjustments i could tell this front row just because of the patch cable situation um i'm gonna have to figure out i might have to get some different patch cables to make this whole thing work here Okay, so let me see. Let me try something really quick. So you pop this out. Okay, you see I have the Velcro on the inside. Same here. Okay, so give me a quick example. Okay, out of here. Then I want to go in here. Now I got to remember too that the power for the for this pedal is right here too. So I want to put it. I want to leave a little bit of a gap in case I have to replace this cable doing a show. Also, you want to make sure that you leave enough space in between in case you're in a show and your pedal board stops working and you got to scramble and figure out what's wrong and you need to hot swap a cable. At the last minute, or a jumper from one cape one pedal to another because one pedal stops working. You want enough space in between so you can pop out that patch cable. So I might have to do some rearranging on my front row here because I'm already can see that I'm not going to have enough room for the MXR cable uh, pedals down here in the front row. So I might have to figure something out as, along the top row so I got this space right here I might have to shift everything over a little bit or maybe move this this uh, sand zamp a little higher up you know I might have to do some rearranging here so this is part one of the video okay so this is basic setup on a pedal board I'm gonna do a part two where it's all put together and then I'll hook it up to an amp and then I'll go through each pedal and to see how it sounds. But this is more of a the assembly or concept behind putting together a pedal board. So that's it, y'all. I'll catch up with y'all next time when this thing is done. Later. All right, really quick, y'all. I already had to do some rearranging of the pedals. You can see I turned my uh, sand zamp over just to get the, uh, so I can make all my spacing in between my pedals like I want it. So I turned it off to the side to sand zamp. It'll still work. I can still access it, set my settings, and put a little short patch cable. So again, my setup is basically going to be in the guitar, guitar in, out of the guitar into the uh, tuner, out of the tuner into the compressor. Out of compressor into envelope, out of envelope into octave, out of octave into synthesizer, out of synthesizer into bass wah, out of bass wah into big muff into from big muff into sans amp and then out. Plug the amplifier and output. Front of house will go and XLR output. I can still control my settings, boost the bass if I need it, ground lift if I need it. Okay, if I want to go wireless. All I do is just hook in a patch cable similar to this, plug it into the front of the bass whammy, 
and I got me some wireless happening okay so I haven't wired the electrical yet which is all these cables down here and then you can use cable ties to tie down stuff if you got some loose stuff here so when I wire up the electrical I'm gonna be using these cable ties to tie it down okay so like I said my next video will be a video on actually trying to sucker out making sure everything works you never know I might have to replace a patch cable or two uh, I've had these for a while so we'll see what works and what doesn't work and uh, that's it y'all later again talk to y'all soon